This is a custom dev board hardware design that features a Raspberry Pi Pico 2 or RP2350 and an ESP32 C3 with chip antenna. In this video, we will go through the hardware design of the ESP32 C3 part of this board. You will learn what it takes to build your own custom ESP32 dev board or how to add an ESP32 to an existing PCB project to provide Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connectivity. We will also write some firmware examples to bring up our board and test its wireless capabilities. Without further ado, let's get started. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB. More on them later. Uh, this project started as an RP2350 uh, dev board. Then I have included this ESP32 C3 for wireless connectivity. Uh, since I'm already paying for the PCB assembly setup fees and uh, such, uh, adding this ESP32 with the supporting passives did only increase the bomb cost by a few more uh, bucks. And we can still use it as a standalone ESP32 dev board. It has a USB port for programming, uh, GPIO pins, reset and boot uh, buttons. Regardless of this RP2350 uh, MCU, uh, let's now move to the project's article uh, and of course it's linked down in the video's the description starting with an overview for the ESP32 which is a low power MCU port from the ESP32 family with a RISC-V core that runs up to 160 MHz it has Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, uh, low energy a decent set of uh, digital peripherals and also an integrated flash memory so we can easily say that it's a highly integrated solution that fits a lot of applications uh, and it comes in four uh, different variants, uh, two of which are actually uh, reached end of life and not recommended for new designs. And we are left to, uh, with the, those two uh, variants. And I picked this one since it has more uh, Jeep IO pins available. To start the hardware design, we will need at least the following uh, three documents. First of which is, of course, the data sheet for the uh, MCU itself. And the other one is this reference design, which is pre-made and pre-certified from Espressive. Uh, so we can take inspiration from uh, these uh, designs. You will find the complete uh, schematics uh, near the end of this uh, document here. Uh, and most importantly, the hardware design guidelines for the ESP32 C3 from Espressive. And in this document, you will find all the information that you will need. The crystal oscillator setup, the USB, the RF uh, section, the strapping uh, pins for the boot uh, mode selection, and so on. And it also has a schematic uh, design example with a checklist. And this is uh, pretty much what I have used for my uh, custom uh, dev board. Uh, if we get back to our project, here is the schematic design that I came up with. I'm using this USB port for uh, power programming and serial communication. And I'm feeding this 5 volts from USB to this uh, LDO to regulate the 5 volts down to 3.3, which is required by the microcontrollers on board. And I'm using those uh, two diodes to do a kind of O-ring for the power supply since I'm using two ports for this uh, board. We have uh, two USB ports, one for the RP and one for the ESP. That's why we need those uh, two diodes. Uh, for a more power efficient solution, you could use a DC-DC converter or a buck uh, step-down converter. But this LDO is totally fine for a prototyping uh, board like this. And you can also include an ESD protection for the USB if you need to. And here is the complete schematic design for the ESP32 part of this uh, dev board. All of the GPI opens are uh, connected to the pin headers on my board here and for the power supply uh, pins we need to have these uh, bypassing uh, capacitors uh, just pay attention that you need to have this uh, pi filter here near the vdd 3p3 which is the analog supply for this mcu port uh, just keep that in mind that uh, vdd and vdd a are digital uh, supplies which may be counterintuitive those are the usb pins gbio 18 and 19 which can be found in the data sheet uh, here on this uh, page of the data sheet, you will find that GPIO 18 and 19 are the USB uh, pins. And those are the crystal oscillator uh, pins. You need to have a 40 megahertz crystal oscillator. And this part is also taken from the reference design. It's quite unfortunate that we can't use these quad spy uh, pins. Even if the chip has an internal uh, flash memory and we are not using an external quad spy flash, we still can't use these uh, GPIO pins. And here is the RF section. I'm using this uh, antenna, which is 2.4 gigahertz antenna. It's uh, 50 ohm uh, impedance. Here is the antenna port uh, number and here is the data sheet of the antenna. Those are the specs of my chip antenna. It's edge placed antenna type and this is the footprint for the antenna. Uh, and this is the layout of the antenna port on uh, my board. Regarding this impedance matching uh, network, 
uh, the antenna impedance is 50 ohm we will use a 50 ohm trace and the impedance of the rf output from this uh, specific uh, microcontroller is 35 plus 10 j which is not 50 ohms so we need this uh, matching network to have a matched impedance to guarantee the maximum power transfer uh, and those two push buttons are used for the reset function and the boot uh, select function i'm having the gpio pin 9 uh, pulled up and also gpio 8 pulled up like this uh, which is also recommended in the data sheet and in the hardware design guidelines according to this uh, table in order to operate in the joint download mode uh, which supports usb serial programming or uart download mode you need to have the pin uh, number nine pulled down and pin eight pulled up and for normal operation we need to have uh, pin nine uh, pulled up that's why we pull it up here using this resistor and we pull it down using this push button in order to uh, get to the joint download uh, mode which is the bootloader uh, the data sheet also recommends to pull up the gpio number uh, two they say that uh, it's recommended to due to glitches and such uh, i left it uh, floating i'm using the gpio2 as a normal gpio pin uh, and i didn't find any issue in doing uh, this i'm only pulling up the gpio8 and uh, pin 9 is used for the boot mode uh, selection using this uh, boot button and that's all about it in terms of the schematic uh, design for this uh, esp32 c3 uh, part and for the pcb layout and routing uh, there is nothing special about routing this pcb actually uh, only you have to have the 90 ohm differential uh, impedance lines for the usb the usb termination resistors as close as possible to the chip itself the bypassing capacitors near the power supply uh, pins and a 50 ohm impedance line for the rf going into the feed point of the chip antenna and the layout the exact layout for the chip antenna itself with the matching network uh, is found here in the data sheet of the uh, chip antenna itself uh, to be honest i'm not sure about this extended uh, section for the footprint of the antenna since uh, this pin is not going to ground this is uh, floating or it's uh, just for the mechanical part and for placing the and assembling the chip antenna itself but they are putting the dimensions for this part so uh, I have included that in my uh, design. I can't yet confirm if it's mandatory or not. Uh, I just had to follow the datasheet recommendations. Uh, at the end, it worked uh, just as fine. You also need to pay attention to the uh, 50 ohm trace going to the antenna. You should not have sharp corners for that trace. You need to have a rounded trace. And there is actually a plugin in KCAD to help you do that uh, rounded uh, tracks. Uh, what I can also uh, recommend here is to do yourself uh, a favor and use larger parts for the antenna antenna matching network because maybe in the future you will need to tune your uh, matching network uh, and it will be very hard to use uh, those uh, 0402 uh, parts using uh, 0603 uh, parts for the antenna matching network will be much better at the end when it comes time to uh, tune your antenna uh, and now after completing the hardware design of our uh, board we will export the fabrication files and go to JLC PCB and now it's our sponsor time JLC PCB is one of the largest PCB manufacturers in China they offer amazing quality uh, services for affordable and competitive prices you can get up to four layers pcb five pieces for only two dollars this is 10 by 10 centimeters and up to eight layers for uh, five by five centimeters uh, pcb for only two dollars as well they also offer flexible pcbs very affordable pcb assembly service with a huge stock of parts that you can get for very affordable prices as well they also have a high quality 3d printing service and cnc machining service and a huge stock of mechanical parts that you can use for your projects register for a new account using the link in my description and you will get a 60 us dollars discount coupon that you can use for your projects after uploading our gerber file we will also upload the bomb and component positions file for the pcb assembly then we will place our order and wait for the delivery and here is how my board turned out after receiving it from glc pcb it looks very great uh, i have tested the power supply section and didn't find anything suspicious or any short circuit or whatever and we are now actually ready to start testing our board for uh, esp32 firmware development we can actually use micro python circuit python and the esp32 uh, csdk from espressive which is artus based we can use embedded uh, rust or arduino ide i will just use arduino ide since it's the most popular way for programming esp32 microcontrollers however if you want to see a tutorial for the ESP32 IDF or CSDK uh, just let me know in the comments below and I will make a video about it in the future and let's start with a lead blinking GPIO demo example we will toggle the pin number 8 which is connected to the onboard LED uh, we are talking about this LED uh, and here are the configurations I'm using for the board for a custom ESP32 C3 board uh, I believe you will need to select this ESP32 C3 dev module uh, I'm enabling the USB CDC 
communication the cpu clock the flash memory size uh, i will leave those as it is uh, i will connect my board to the pc usb port uh, it's now connected and let's see the port yes here is my uh, esp32 device it's selected correctly i will click on the upload and as you can see our onboard led is now uh, blinking uh, let me open the camera to show you the live uh, footage here is our board and the LED is actually blinking. Let's go to the next example. In this demo example, we will uh, test the USB CDC communication for uh, serial uh, printing. Uh, just make sure in the configurations here, your USB CDC enabled. Because by default, it will be disabled. You just need to enable this and upload this test code. Uh, and let's open our serial terminal. And as you can see, here are the messages coming from the ESP32 uh, over USB CDC. And let's now move to the next example. Uh, we will test the onboard uh, new pixel RGB, which is this uh, RGB LED. Uh, I will upload this new pixel RGB demo example. Uh, it was also a successful test. Uh, next up, I will test the Bluetooth uh, low energy or uh, BLE uh, using the NRF Connect uh, Android application on my phone. I will send some uh, predefined strings to control the onboard RGB LED color and as you can see it's also a successful test and this is a very good sign that our chip antenna is actually working uh, but we still need to test the Wi-Fi connectivity so the next test will be a Wi-Fi scan and connect example I will try to uh, discover all the surrounding uh, networks and as you can see uh, my home router Wi-Fi network is the strongest signal and it was also able to discover some of the neighbors uh, Wi-Fi networks the RSSI measurement is the received signal strength indicator and we can check it here uh, we have like uh, negative uh, 46 dBm which falls in this uh, region between amazing and very good which is a very good uh, sign actually uh, it's almost the same as the ESP32 S3 module that I have been using and in the next uh, demo example we will set up a web server on the ESP32 to host a simple web page to allow us to control the brightness of the onboard LED we will control the brightness of this LED over a web page using uh, my smartphone it was also a successful test before concluding this video let's do one more test for communication between the rp2350 and the esp32 c3 microcontrollers in this demo i have uploaded a firmware example to the esp32 c3 to act as a web server hosting a simple web page to allow the user to select an rgb color and the data is sent over spi bus to the rp2350 which writes the data to a new pixel rgb led which was also a successful test as you have seen. And now what's next? First of all, it's highly recommended to check out the RP2350 hardware design video that covers the other half of this uh, PCB project uh, if you haven't watched it yet already. Uh, and the next point is, uh, I have heard some rumors about the ESP32 C3 being uh, bad for Wi-Fi or it keeps dropping the uh, Wi-Fi co communication and so on. To be honest, this is actually not the case since it only happens in some uh, dev boards, not all of them. It has more to do with the antenna matching and tuning so stay tuned for an upcoming video about antenna measurement and matching networks tuning with a nano vna and such i will dedicate a video or two for this specific subject and i will get everything we will need to make this measurements and tune our antenna and measure its performance and in the meantime if you can please consider supporting this channel using the links in the description below uh, and let's say you have already made your uh, custom ESP32 board and the, the deadline is approaching and you don't have the time or budget to consider having a VNA do the tuning and such and you have to show a demo that's at least working uh, so in that case we will have to sweep it under the carpet you know we can reduce the transmission power to reduce reflections sacrificing some range to get a more stable connection by using this uh, function shown here and this is just one way to work around this issue it will buy you some time to work on fixing and tuning your antenna section later on uh, and the next point is uh, that uh, some people uh, feel offended by seeing two microcontrollers on the same board or a microcontroller and FPGA or uh, this or that one may say that uh, if this MCU for the performance and this is for Wi-Fi why not use an ESP32 S3 which is a high performance than this and it has also a Wi-Fi so uh, why don't we use uh, this or that uh, I will give you my take on that uh, subject in a separate video because I believe that it deserves to be addressed properly. Last but not least, I have already received two mixed signal PCB projects. First of which is this STM32 audio synthesis and uh, DSP board. And the other one is this Xilinx Arctic 7 FPGA audio video processing board. It has an audio codec. 
an audio section it has a camera input for the video and it has a hdmi output uh, and so many onboard peripherals and sensors uh, to play with if you find this interesting please consider subscribing to the channel and turn on the notification bell to not miss any of the new video releases i'm signing out and i will catch you in the next one